So I started, I think like many people, I started in a church choir and uh, fell in love with singing and was always singing. And so I was lucky that I started voice lessons very early and um, was introduced to opera at a very early age, which is kind of a unique thing, but I fell in love with it and yeah. decided that I wanted to sing opera and was in the Metropolitan Children's Chorus when I was 11 and just knew that that's what I wanted to do. The costumes, the direction, the conducting, the, all the instruments, there were so many things going on and I just fell in love. So that's that's kind of the first start of it. And I was, yeah. I was, I mean, it was very interesting because I got the start at one of the most, you know, famous opera houses in the world. So to be introduced to it at that level was really neat. And, and how did you discover yourself? I mean, yeah. I was just always singing. I mean, I don't, I don't think I knew whether it was good or whether it was bad. I just <laughs> was always singing, yeah. and so people would tell my mom, "Oh, she has, you know, she has a beautiful voice." And she actually was like, "I think I need to get her voice lessons because she's always singing." So it was really my mom who pushed it. So you, you started your lessons at eleven. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, well, I've researched a bit, and uh, I know that you have um, opened with your colleague. Uh, sing for Hope? Yes. Yeah. Your best friend, I hope. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so tell us more about this. Sure. So Sing for Hope is um, an organization, like you said, that I started with my best friend from Juilliard. We're both sopranos, which is kind of unusual that two sopranos get along well enough to work together. Yeah. <laughs> but we do. We have a beautiful working relationship. And basically what we found was that artists um, wanted to give back. There wasn't necessarily a, a, an organization that was specifically for your everyday artist who wanted to go and volunteer. Yeah. And so we started not knowing exactly what we were going to do, and we knew that many, many people before us had done beautiful and very successful benefit concerts. So it wasn't like it was a new idea, yeah. but it was something where we could, we felt that we were doing something to give back. And so we started Sing for Hope with a benefit concert, and then we realized that, you know, as we grew and as the organization grew, um, we included lots of different artists, so not just singers, but instrumentalists, uh, musicians of all kinds, uh, puppeteers, you name it. We, and today we have over 1,500 artists who volunteer their time to schools, hospitals, and communities. And we're best known in New York for something called the Sing for Hope Pianos. We place 88 pianos on the streets and public spaces of New York for anyone and everyone to play. Each one is done by a different visual artist, and then they get donated to the places that we work in. So it's actually very similar to what we did this morning, which was John, the State Human Band, and I went to the Chronic Care Center yes. and had a wonderful morning performing for the kids and having them kind of perform with us and clap with us and enjoy it. And um, it was a really beautiful visit to the Chronic Care Center. It's why I'm in town yeah. um, for the 20th anniversary. I think Mrs. Harali has done an incredible job to create something and to stay with it for so long and to be such a, a you know, a forethinker of, of treating children with thalassemia, with diabetes, and not just, you know, at the early stages, but throughout their lives. That's something that's extremely tiring. Not, yeah, not only that, but, but the, the, the level of commitment that that takes yeah. is really something. Because it's not just, you know, you're cured and you're moving on. It's something that you stay with for for a long time. These are chronic diseases, and that means chronic care, and that means care for the, not only the, the children who are living with it, but the families who have to deal with that on a regular basis. So it was a really fantastic visit today. We had a great time, and we're very much looking forward to uh, celebrating 20 years of an institution whose mission is you know, so incredible, treating today's diseases and promoting tomorrow's health. I think that says it all for an institution that has done that for so long, and I hope we'll do that for many, many years to come. Well, thank you for this. This is um, very nice. Um, so, your visit to Lebanon it, this this time is only because uh, of the uh, chronic care? That's right, for the chronic care, the celebration of the 20th anniversary for the chronic care center. Okay, and are you? do you have any other preparation before you come back oh, in July? Yes, I'll definitely be having uh, some rehearsals. Well, for this week, it's for the chronic care center. Okay. And then when I come back for the Zouk uh, Mikhail International Festival, with Bryn Turfel, that'll be at the end of July, and I'll come back a little bit before so that we can rehearse and get everything ready for that.
a concert for the opening. And what about that festival? I mean, uh, how do you compare it to last year's success? And uh, did you enjoy it? And yeah, I, I, you know, I consider myself an ambassador for the Zoop <laughs> festival. I have, to, I love coming back. I, I look forward to it every year. I look forward to being back and and having the opportunity to perform with such a wide variety of incredible artists. Um, and so this will be the first time performing with Bryn Terfel, who is someone that I, I really admire and I'm looking forward to that. And the atmosphere is, is very special. First of all, you don't get a lot of festivals that are, you know, well, there are many festivals that are outdoors, but none so much that are so intimate. And so you really feel like when you're sitting in the amphitheater that yeah. you're, you're very close to the artists yes. and I love that as a performer because you really get to connect with the audience yes. and um, you know I hope that the audience enjoys being sort of in a close in close quarters even though it's outside that adds another level because you feel the breeze and you know it, it's just um, it's wonderful to celebrate summer that way yeah um, I have a few quick questions sure. um, I mean, what's your favorite play My favorite play, favorite opera, or opera play. Um, let's see. That's hard. I love, um, I love *Marriage of Figaro*. Oh, we have some music now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's the city. The city's music. Um, I love *Marriage of Figaro* of Mozart. I also love um, *Britain*, the *Midsummer Night's Dream*, which is Shakespeare, obviously based on the Shakespeare play *Midsummer Night's Dream*. So very extreme, but yeah. you know, beautiful in, in their own in their own worlds. And um, what's your favorite duet that you have performed with? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> well, I think I'll always remember performing with Placido Domingo here at Zoo. Yeah. Um, I think that that's you know something that. Uh, well, no, I had the opportunity to sing with him in Jordan. Oh, all right. But um, I really, you know, since he's an idol of mine and he has performed at Zoo, and I was at that concert, which is why I. <laughs> <laughs> was hoping to be on stage with him that night, but um, <laughs> no. But anyway, I think um, you know we we got to do a, a duet from a Mozart opera, Don Giovanni, La Città del Mondo. So that's always a great duet, and it was great to get to sing with him. Okay, um, I'll wrap it up. Um, do you have any advice for the young generation when it comes to music? Sure. I think there are a lot of changes in terms of music, not just classical music, but music in general. So I think, you know, if I went to Juilliard and we didn't have a lot of technology classes because, you know, I think that nowadays people can produce their own albums, they can really be sort of in charge of their own musical career in a different way. So my advice would be learn that craft as well as working on your musical craft yeah. because that's something that I think will come in handy and it'll give you another level of understanding when you do, if and when you do get to go into a studio or if and when you do want to create something. Creati creativity now is really at the tip of every person's fingers, not just musicians. So we have access to things nowadays that you know we didn't have before. So get familiar with it and, and keep up to date with it because they're just tools that make it easier and to make make it easier to be out there. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, what would you like to say finally to your fans in Beirut? I'm thrilled to be back in Beirut. Okay. Thrilled to be here in the nice weather, and I'm looking forward to seeing people as as I'm in town and I'm at the Chronic Care Gala and back at Zoo on July 31st for the opening. I hope they'll come. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much for Great. the interview. Yeah, no problem.